Hello and welcome to the Wednesday Night Bottling Stream! Yes! It's Wednesday where I'm at. I don't know where it is where you at. It's hump day. Uh, it's been a good week for Brian. Uh, I, oh, just, sorry. I always forget. I always forget. I always forget. Uh, this is the Wednesday Night Model Stream. I'm your streamer, Brian Bentley for CGSpectrum.com, the department head here uh, of modeling at, uh, at CGSpectrum.com. And this is the Wednesday Night Modeling Stream. Uh, welcome, welcome. I might be having some internet issues today. It looks like my bandwidth is a little low for some reason. Uh, I have like 5G wireless internet. It's ra raining here right now, so that might be affecting it. I don't know. The The demo goblins might be on me right now. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but we will persevere. So uh, this is the Wednesday Night Modeling Stream where we talk about all things modeling, many, many things modeling. Um, and what I like to do with this stream is, one, I like to stretch my own abilities, and I really want to give you guys uh, an insight on into, you know, how a CG artist works, and like kind of like the, the things you have to overcome, and the things like kind of like the pitfalls that you can get into, and just kind of like the, the unpackaged, unpolished uh, way that a lot of times things come together. A lot of times things don't go from A to B to C. Um... Uh, we focus on Maya, we focus on ZBrush, and lately we've been focusing a lot on Houdini. Houdini is my, kind of like my new, uh, my new software of choice for a lot of things. A lot of people think of Houdini as just for like fire and smoke and stuff like that, but its modeling tools are amazing, amazing. Now, for direct modeling, like for a character, I would still say Maya is still the best, maybe 3D Studio Max, maybe even Blender. Um, for just straight up modeling, just pu pushing and pulling points, cutting stuff. Hey, John Lynchburg, how you doing, man? Uh, good morning to you too. Uh, yeah. So, but um, for for procedural things, and uh, like I, I, the the more you work with proceduralism, the more you see opportunities for it, and that's kind of like the way the human brain works. It's like kind of like if you like rent a car or you get a new car, and then you see uh, a bunch of cars that are just like your car. That's that's kind of your human brain working. And I also wanted to, uh, wanted to, like I said, I always want to challenge myself. Uh, is it possible to learn ZBrush if got no sculpting or with that kind of artistic view? Yeah, it's possible to learn ZBrush. Now, ZBrush, like, uh, and all these things, I, I say this uh, with, with pure, pure sincerity, all of these things are just tools. They are just tools. You still need some sort of artistic foundation. Now, people, some people, uh, uh, some people, oh, <laughs> uh, I might come back to the Houdini project. I might actually try to integrate what I'm doing now into that, maybe by the end of the year in a couple months. Um, I just had a lot of, I, I'd been on the, I had been on the environmental project for a really, really long time, and a lot of people were asking about character stuff. People really get jazzed about character stuff. I like character stuff. Um, I find character uh, work so much harder than, than environment work. It's, there's so many more things that you have to, to think about psychologically. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to jump into some character stuff for the next couple weeks, and I might, I might try to integrate that back into, into the Houdini work that I had before. Maybe put her, make, like, have this character, like, perched on top of that, like, giant head or something like that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, um, I like to, I like to challenge myself, uh, in my work. I like to, to move around, do a lot of things, learn a bunch of different things that I, uh, that I don't really know how to do because no one really knows how to do everything. Um, I just read a book. I just read this book uh, called Can't Hurt Me by uh, David Goggins. Amazing book. I highly, 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 highly recommend it. Uh, uh, that should be fixed now. Looks like I'm freezing a little bit at the front. Uh, I'm back at nine. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So it popped back up to nine. I was at, at three, 3,000. Now I'm at 9,000. So that should be more than enough to keep it smooth. Thank you for being patient. Uh, it looks like I'm clipping a little bit of my, my microphone as well. Let's turn that down. There we go. Um, so as I was saying, a book by David Goggins, fantastic book, uh, talks about like, you know, he's, he was this guy who like kind of came from nothing and ended up in the Marines, and he was, like, the most fit man in the world for a long time, did, like, uh, uh, man, he did, like, he did, like, uh, like, 8,000 pull-ups or something in, like, 24 hours, it was absolutely insane, so he wrote this book, 
and it's about like testing yourself, pushing your limits, staying outside of your comfort zone. So uh, that's what we're going to start doing. That's what, what that's what I'm going to do with this project. So what are we working on today? So uh, like I said in the uh, I said last week in, in in the title, this is what I this is the character I called Valkyrie. Uh, I I start I think I started this character um, about I think it was about four years ago. And uh, I had just started teaching. I had just left uh, Industrial Light and Magic, and I had moved to Hong Kong, and I was teaching a modeling course at uh, at another school here. And um, it, it was great. Like I, I did not realize how rusty I was. Um, oh, that's great. Uh, that's that's a good name. I, it's a cool name. I really like it. It means so much. Like it's like uh, I think it's like a god of. Uh, uh, I think it's like a god of victory or something like that. It's also a bird. Like it's it's a good name. So that's a that's a good one. Uh, the Fallen 147. That's that's a, that's a good name. So uh, I was teaching this character course, and I had realized that I had been doing uh, rigging and simulation at ILM so long. My my um my uh, character work was really really uh, lacking. So I really dove in on this on this class that I was teaching and kind of went along with the students I was teaching. And really took took it to heart and really tried to, to build this out. Now, uh, at that time, I wasn't using. I was a Houdini user, so I had I really had, and no idea uh, how I was going to do her wings because these aren't fairy wings. They kind of look like like chicken nuggets. Uh, that's because I wanted these to be like full feathered wings. Um, so I wanted to be like full feathered raven wings. I also wanted to be uh, African American because there aren't really or at that time there weren't really a lot of African-American characters like CG characters out there um, and I wanted her to have like big like curly hair so like I wanted her to have hair that was like like this basically something like that right and uh, so the, the, and then the feathers would be something like like this it's a terrible drawing but you get the idea Something like that. But that was that was my idea, and uh, I had no idea how to do those things. So, um, and never let that stop you. Like I like I learned that. I don't know who taught me that or how I learned it, but I I generally I try not to let technical limitations stop me. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna take this as far as I can, and then I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out as I go along, and that's what I did. I took it as far as I could, uh, as far as I knew how to do. And um, like the, the term ended and this is what I ended up with. And I was like, okay, I'll just put this away and I'll, I'll pick it up later. Um, and there's something to be said about, about doing that. Like, like just, putting, just putting something back in the pocket. If you don't have time to finish it, don't just scrap it and throw it away. Like, leave it. <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? Um, just leave it. And so this is where like, like kind of like things like that I talk about in my classes, like file organization, um, Good morning, Angelica like Wings. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, uh, I was going to do, like, I really like ravens. So I was going to, and, and I wanted her to be an African-American character. She's going to have blackish hair. So I thought, like, if her hair is black, right, she's going to have a lot of melanin in her skin. If she has bird wings, she's going to have a lot of melanin in those wings as well. So that would also allow me to do something interesting with her, with her, um, with her costume. So if her, if her skin is dark, her hair is dark, her wings are dark, I can do something kind of bright and fun with her costume like that's that's kind of the idea that i was going for um so let's let's just break this down and let's just look at kind of the things that, that i've done well the things that i haven't done well because like i said i'm only human you know uh you know you learn as you go so um looking at this i was like and, and i was very i'm very nervous I, I went back and forth i was like should i show like my past work am i gonna be judged blah 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 and at the end of the day, it's it's my work and it's 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 my you know it's it's my learning curve. So if you get something out of it, then great. If you don't, then then you want to judge, then that's on you too. But it doesn't really affect me. So <laughs> it's my party. Um. Okay. So let's break this down. So I made I, I modeled the body. So let's look at the body. Um. So first thing I did, I made sure is to be very very. Um, uh, well, Ravens is a big symbol. Of Odin, one of the controllers. So it works. All right, cool, 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 cool. Maybe I'll give her like an eye patch or something if she's if she's a symbol of Odin. Like put a put a badass eye patch on her that she can take on and off. That'll give her some sort of powers. That's a really good idea, actually. If that's a Norse, if Valkyrie, I might. Uh, I'm gonna write that down. 
That's interesting. I think that would be really cool. Like a an African American Norse themed like because like her 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 clothing is pretty generic, right? She's kind of got like this top and this belt and then these pants. So they, I can put whatever you know uh, patterns on this. So like a, like an African American Norse raven uh, person. That oh that'll be cool. I think I like that. I'm writing that down. Norse imagery. I've written that down in my notebook. That that's gonna be great. Um, yeah, I was I was looking for like a kind of inspiration on what to do with her clothing. So that's thank you, thank you for all in one forty forty seven. That's great. Um, so let's 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 get into this and we'll see where we're at. So I'm gonna turn my my uh, my wireframe on now. Uh, I haven't uh, re uh, re apologized the clothing yet. So I think I did this. In, yeah, I did this in Marvelous Designer um, way way back in the day. Um, and uh, she's got this big hood, which I may or may not keep. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it might be a little bit much. Uh, but one thing I made sure I did is I left this this file very, very clean. So if I look, I have my Valkyrie Geo top, and then I have each one of my parts split up into, uh, into their own group. Uh, this is something I see students struggle with. Uh, there is no color. <laughs> there's no color at all. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, but there's got to be like rune, uh, like sim symbology and things like that. I can I can draw on that. It doesn't have to be completely Norse, but it can just be like, like, like inspired by, inspired by. Um, so, what was I going with? Oh yeah. So I split all this stuff up into their own groups. Uh, all the groups are zeros and ones in all of my geometry. None of my geometry has uh, history on it. So if we look here. All this geometry, none of it has history on it. It's all frozen. It's all at zeros and ones. So it's all uh, it's all nice and clean. So anytime you're going to put down a project, it's always a really good idea to make sure it's nice and clean. So when you pick it back up, you're not like, oh, what is, what is this thing called? What is this P cube 97, whatever? Like it's nice and clean and you can you can pick it up again. Okay, so let's, let's get into this. So... Uh, the garment is made of a top. Let's just do this. So this is our top. That's the top, and it's got a, a belt also, and then it's got the pants. Pretty straightforward. All right, so all this is, and each one of the panels um, I left as, as the panel because I'm going to go, I may do... I don't know how I'm going to redo the top, uh, the retopology, but we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, and this is as much for me as it is for you. I have to remember how I put this thing together. You know, four years is a long time uh, for me. Okay, so let's just hide that garment. And it looks like I did a pretty good job. Let's hide the wings as well. Let's hide everything except for the the body. So it looks like I did a decent job on the topology for the body. Now she's gonna be clothed uh, all the time. So I didn't really put a lot of detail into this middle bit. I really just need to make sure that uh, there was enough detail in there for her to be able to articulate properly. And uh, uh, I find it, so Christopher Jurgen says, I find it weird that so many people wait to organize stuff. It's almost always the name thing and put it into right groups and add being, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, I, I organize as I go. Um, I, I know some people who don't like to do that and they'll just do it all at the end, but it doesn't matter whether you do it as you go or whether you do it, you know, during, it just has to get done. It's one of those things that has to get done, especially if you're working in a group and you're handing your, you know, your model off to, you know, a simulation person or a rigging person or, you know, a surfacing person or whatever. It has to be nice and, and, and organized. Okay. So as I was saying, um, the, uh, the body doesn't really have that much detail because she's going to be clothed. Um, and I really just wanted enough to have enough detail in there to, to you know, articulate properly. And then I to also be able to transfer my skin weighting eventually to my clothing and then eventually send that clothing when she's in a pose or when she's, when she's flying around or whatever. Um, so a couple of things that I, that I did right that I do know um, is I have a really nice loop around here. So I have this loop that goes under the breasts and then around the shoulders and then into the back. Now, um, I've seen some uh, models where they actually have a loop for the shoulder blade, um, but that's mostly for models that you're gonna see their back. 
Um, so this one, I probably could have done it, but I was probably being lazy or I just didn't know to do it. Um, so that's a really good one. Um, the other ones are these guys here, these loops that kind of go down the arm and then back up the arm so they don't, they don't bleed out into, uh, into the body. So that allows me to put a lot more detail in down into my fingers and, uh, and it doesn't like bleed up into into the face, which is nice. And then I have this guy that kind of like I could like I could like lop off the head if I if I really needed to. Um, so that same idea is I have down here in the leg. So I have these loops that come down into the foot and then and then just kind of stay there. So how you do this? Um, I can do a little test here. So it's gonna make a cube. Oh, the other thing I also before I go into that is I made sure she is real world height. So she is about 150 centimeters. So she's roughly about, oh, I know I keep freezing, my, my internet is bumping in and out. Um, it's down to six now, so I'll have to check that. Uh, but she is real world height. So um, Maya's units are in centimeters. So uh, she's about 150 centimeters tall. So uh, what is it? Hey Siri, what is 150 centimeters in feet? 150 centimeters is 4.92 feet. So she's roughly she's about five feet five foot tall, um, which is good. Like which is about the the height of like kind of like a, a a female character of of this stature. So that's the other thing. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, I was gonna show you how to do the. Uh, arm thing so there's a couple of YouTube videos about this and which are all right so from for the arm generally what what I see a lot of people do a lot of students is they'll just extrude they'll extrude this in and they'll pull it out and then they'll just extrude it again and that'll be their arm right so you would extrude like this and this is like really rough but you get the idea extrude like that and then hold on shift and then you extrude again like that and then that would be and if you want to put that twist in there you could do that like that so that would be basically your arm right so this is what I see a lot of people a lot of people doing now the problem with this is is it makes this really not great topology so if I want to add a loop here it's gonna go all the way across to the other side or if I want to add a loop here it's gonna go all the way up into the head like the head would be this way so a better way or I wouldn't say a, a different way to do this would be to take this initial extrusion let's go back one more extrude that out and this becomes your shoulder and then you take this guy and you extrude that down and actually an even better way to do this would be to uh, pull this one out, do another extrusion, and then extrude this part down. So now you have this great, yeah. you have this great arm socket that you can, uh, so if I were to put an edge loop here, it stays in the arm. So I can put as many edge loops there. Now, this edge loop will still go up into uh, into the head, but I can put as many edge loops around this, this part as I want and it's not gonna go anywhere. And this one will just stay on the chest. And I can also, if I need more articulation here, I can put that there, okay? So uh, if I wanted to put this, pull this out into a T pose, do so see how that that just articulates way way better because I have like this little buffer here it's like a like if it's like almost if the as if this were a piece of metal and this were a piece of metal and this part here this guy is like a little gasket that like holds them together that allows them to uh, to articulate independent of one another and that would be really hard to do if you didn't have uh, if you didn't have that that buffer there, 
we could even uh, let's do average vertices where Nine. Got a new keyboard. There we go. Average vertices. There we go. So already you can see that that's looking a lot more like a shoulder than what we had before. So if I do like a little soft selection here, let's see. You can see that. You can see how that articulates really, really well. And that's not even with a rig, that's just moving stuff around. <clears throat> so that's the that's the philosophy behind that. I've totally broken this now. Anyway. So that's how I got, and you can even see, you can already see the remnants of that here. So if you look, uh, let's do this. So this is that original. There's that buffer zone there and then this went like that and then that came down like that so then all my other all my other stuff flows like so um cool yeah so there's that that's the arm uh, so that that went well that i think i did that pretty well not bad four years ago brian um so the head is is okay um, so I definitely have loops around my eyeballs, so that's really, really important. Here, I have a loop here, so that stuff stays. I have uh, the what we call the raccoon mask. Now, some people subscribe to the raccoon mask, and some don't. Um, I like it because you know it just makes it easier to contain um, any forehead structure or anything like that, or forehead movement, things, things of that, that nature. Now, the thing that really, really gets a lot of people, and myself included, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that'll happen, that'll happen. Uh, the thing that really uh, messes people up, and myself included, is this area right here. Like, I, I would say this area right here is the hardest part of any face of any character. Um, because you're going from something that's relatively flat, like if you cut off your nose, your face is pretty flat. Like, I mean, it's got some curvature to it this way and some curvature to it this way. But overall, like, it's pretty flat. And then you have, like, this just this knob that comes out of the front of it. Like, that's your nose. So that's really uh, difficult. So um, I've studied this a few different ways. Um, and I've done a lot of... Uh, I, I listened to uh, one, of the, one of the main uh, guys that, that kind of, like, really revolutionized this and brought it to the forefront... First of all, is a guy named Brian Tyndall. He wrote a book called uh, The Art of Moving Points. It's on, I think he only released it on like Apple iBooks or something like that. You can still get it. Um, I, if you can get a hand, if you can get, if you can buy it, if you still have an Apple iBooks account, buy it. It's really, really, really good. It's worth every single penny. It's about 300 pages long. It's really, really good. Um, and then, so that was like, so he was the main kind of, topology architect for Pixar and then there was a new guy a uh, new ish guy uh, named Danny Mac who did uh, this this um, this uh, this YouTube video called how to retopologize ahead like a boss and that just that blew my mind so that so that's what I, I started using to to get into this so the main parts of, of a face for me are um, are these kind of like the what I call the Joker slits. So these guys. And then you have a circle around the mouth like this. Now that's pretty straightforward. Now the thing that, that I found really interesting about these is I used to like extrude my nose. Like I would have like a, um, I would have a, a face here and then I would extrude it like outwards like that and then I would constantly be fighting these poles that that extrusion would cause um, so for this for this mesh I did a little bit differently uh, I just actually just rotated these faces out let me go back forward so these faces were actually like 
that and I just took and I rotated them downwards like that um, and so what that gives you is you have what I call I call it the mustache like the poly mustache because you get like if you have this pole here and that pole there you get like this little area in between because it looks like a mustache now she's Freddie Mercury um it gives you <laughs> it gives you like this little this little area of articulation that you can you can like squish and pull around in there without having to, to move the rest of the face um so that just gets extruded out into here like this and then these guys just kind of flow along the side like that so that was the idea behind this um, now this isn't perfect like I said uh, there are some some shortcomings to this one of them is my nostril topology I really don't like that this goes from here into the nostril I don't like that that ends up in there like I would really like this to kind of like flow around the front of the nose in into there like that so that that's something that could be improved um, these guys I think are pretty good uh, I feel like these these edges are a little bit tight like here like this is a little bit too tight I could probably collapse that um, but I did want I wanted a really crisp mouth line there so if I press 3 and let's turn this off I wanted that really crisp mouth line like that let that little lip divider so that's what I wanted out of that so I think I, that's why I put that's why I left those those really tight creases in there because I really wanted that that to come through um, So one thing that I kind of don't like is is this area here. So if I look at my faces, if I do this, like this is bad. Like this going all the way down here, all the way down on the crotch, all the way back up and all the way into the leg. Uh, uh, into the chorus, it killed me honestly. I believe I was able to do it in the end a little bit. Yeah, like your first character is always going to be rough. Very, very rough. I remember my first characters looked so broken and so alien but like that's that's why we do this right like every failure and that's what i was talking about that michael goggins book at the back uh not michael Moore, david goggins book at the at the beginning of the stream he really harps on like every failure every single failure has some nugget of 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 uh of being able to learn i learn more from my failures than i do from my victories for sure um, when things just break and they don't go right and I have to go digging and digging and digging, that's when I learn the most. When everything goes smoothly and everything's smooth sailing, you don't learn anything. I mean, it's fun. It's nice. It's comfortable. Uh, but you don't really learn anything. So uh, so always push yourself. Right. So, um, so this area in here I feel could use a lot of work. Like this spiraling bit is just really bad. So I feel like this could come down and tuck under here. And then um, generally you want like kind of like a cheek area kind of like that goes like this right like this topology here like this this random pole right here is uh is not great um you really want to control your poles so i have like kind of like these poles here and this pole here that don't really line up to anything this one's all right and that one's all right but these guys here are just kind of all over the place so like i said uh not not terrible but not perfect always always you know reevaluate your work and leave room for and uh like learn from improvement so yeah this little section here like this all this stuff could just flow around like that that would be optimal something like that um so not the best, not, not not the worst topology ever, but still room for improvement. Always, always room for improvement. So that's the body. That was like that was probably most of uh, most of my the work that I did. And then like I like I just kind of I, I was very disciplined. I so so wanted to do these talons first, and I saved them for the very very last. And it's probably for a good reason because they turned. I think they turned out quite well. I was really happy with these. Um, one thing I like to do. Um, and I see this a lot. Um, some professionals do it, some don't. I really like in it making like if my 
characters are going to have claws and such. I really like to have it be an actual claw, like a nail. Um, and this is just kind of like a uh, um, artistic decision, I guess, or uh, an aesthetic decision. So many times I see characters that have claws and they just kind of, you know, come out of out of the end of the toe. Um, I mean, that's one way to do it, but it's just, it's like, it bothers me because it's just, it's not anatomically correct, right? If you have a finger, right, your finger has a nail on it that goes like this, and then your finger goes like that, right? So if you're going to make a claw, the claw is, is basically a nail. So you could do variations on that claw. So you could do like a big kind of like that, uh, what's her name? Uh, Lady Demostru from the new, uh, from the new, uh, Resident Evil, or in my case, I was I was looking at bird talons, and bird talons they have like this, they have this hook to them because they there are they eat fish, so they want to hook into stuff and they want to take off and like lift it up. So that's not going to be a very good. That's for more for like stabbing and poking, like a like a beak. So birds tend to have um, something that's more hook like, so they have something that's more like that. So it can claw and grab, and so meat gets like stuck under here and they get stuck around there so they can pull it um so that's why i went with with this design i could i probably could have gone a little bit more like that but uh that's how it ended up so that's the body that's where i spent most of the time uh because that's gonna I, that was i knew that's what all the clothing was gonna drape on that's that was gonna be how it, it affected my um uh my tailoring and my drape of the, the the costume and all that other stuff so um the extras let's hide that body don't have my mouth in here yeah so the mouth i literally just went and <laughs> grabbed a mouth off of the internet like i was like there's no reason to reinvent the wheel i think actually i think this is the mouth from the uh stop staring book jason osipa's kind of seminal work on facial uh, topology and lip sync so I just stole those teeth because you know there's no reason to do more work than you have to uh, so yeah there's there's the teeth um, the eyes are a couple different so I have like it's kind of like placeholder um, uh, placeholder eyebrows and eyelashes might end up doing those I'll probably end up doing those in Houdini with some some of their hair systems so that'll be fun and then I have my eyes in here So I have my eyes and my eye outer, and then I have my inner, and then I have my pupil there. So that's pretty much the rundown of the character. Now let's go look at, now, before I start anything, before I start any new endeavor where I'm trying to make something that looks like something else, gotta use reference. You gotta, gotta, gotta use reference. So. Um, I used a, a few bits of reference uh, before when I was making this, and then I just went back and tried to find them. So the first thing I did, I always go to textures.com. It's like my little trusty little crutch. Probably use it a little bit too much. And I looked for feathers. Now, there's not really much in the way that I can use here for good feathered textures. Um, and this is because feathers are cr incredibly, incredibly complex like we don't give birds birds are amazing like we don't give them enough credit um and whenever you see feathers like this or like this or like this these are all loose feathers um and it always used to confuse me i was like how do these feathers look like this but these feathers look like this um i made it maya from scratch like uh so i was teaching a box modeling class so no zbrush um yeah no zbrush at all started with a box just extrusion and cutting and extruding and cutting and extruding and cutting um it would have been way easier if i could have used zbrush but that wasn't what the class entailed the class entailed just box modeling and a little bit of marvelous designer if the students wanted to use it so um so yeah what i was saying is like why do these feathers look like that and those feathers look all sleek and smooth because feathers are actually like those barbs are little hooks that do this over over each one so when you see birds doing that, like kind of like looks like they're itching, they're basically taking those little hooks and they're hooking them back together and they're aligning their feathers so they're streamlined like this. So to use this for a texture wouldn't really be correct. 
because these they're not aligned, right? They're they're all broken apart and they they're they're not they're not aligned as they would be um, on the body. Uh, how do I feel about Mudbox? Babe, I have no opinion of Mudbox. Uh, I've I think I've used it once, um, and that was years and years and years ago. Um, I mean, it's like I said, it's another tool. It 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 serves a purpose. If you have access to Mudbox or if you need to learn Mudbox for for a job, then do it. Um, whether you learn ZBrush or Mudbox, it doesn't really matter. If you're a good sculptor, you're a good sculptor. You'll figure it out. Um, and that's really like I keep on harping on that. These are just tools. They're just tools. Like you can give, you know, you can give a toddler the most expensive paintbrush in the world, and they're still gonna make mushy like hand painting drawings. You can give, you know, the best illustrator in the world. Like you can give like you know a David Fincher or like a uh, Chris Claremont or something like that. You can give them a crayon, and they'll still be able to make amazing artwork. So it's they're just tools. They're definitely just tools. Um, okay, so this isn't really going to give me much. So I just went to straight up uh, reference. So this is this is actually really good. Uh, I think it's really morbid that people just lop off birds' wings and put them on display, but uh, that's you know that's how it goes. So I'm, I'm getting like an idea of how these feathers are structured, the different types of feathers, where they're going to sit on the wing, um, and then I went and I grabbed oh, that was my reference for the hair. Yeah, and then I found this little nice little thing. So it's like there's different types of, of, of feathers. And we can see, if I put these side by side. Where's my... There we go. It's the foot. It's the wing. If we put these side by side, we can kind of see... A lot of similarities so we can see that this is broken up into sections so this section here is gonna be like this guy right here I think that uh, that section I don't think that's kind of like the I think this is gonna be kind of like the body this section here this middle section is gonna be maybe this guy here These two sections, I mean, that would be that guy and that guy. I think I can probably get away with combining those. And then this break is when these feathers start kind of start to change shape about right there. And then this is that last section. It goes up there. So I have one, two, three, four, five sections of feather that I need to deal with. Um... So, uh, hang on, I just, one second, doo, doo, doo. there we go. Uh, how do I feel about this? It makes sense. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there are like seven different types of feathers, and I think a lot of people look at it the wrong look at the wrong kind as well. I'm asking because my college was using Mudbox. Well, the comment became pointless fast. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no there's no pointless comments here. There's no pointless comments here. It's, I, I like I like when people ask questions and I we we get to talk because otherwise I feel like I'm just screaming into the void, and that's that's it's strange. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so yeah, there's seven different types of feathers, but like this is kind of an abstract concept. So uh, I want to kind of whittle it down to like five, four or five. Okay, so um, and this maybe maybe people are like, oh, this is boring. He's just doing a lot of talking, but you have to you have to like I want to show you like the artist like the 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 the, the journey, right? Like because. Uh, when you watch other YouTube videos, they just get into it. They're like, oh, I did this, this, and this. And then, boom, there's the product. Like, you have to, like, kind of, like, the more you plan, the the easier things will get. I, I swear. Like, the more you plan, the easier things are going to get. Uh, the easier things will be. Uh, not saying that they will be easy, but, like, you at least you have, a, like, a mental roadmap. Okay. So, um, since she's symmetrical, I really only need this one wing. So, I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm gonna spit this out as an FBX and I'll just bring it into Houdini 
Um, because I want to do, I'm going to use the proceduralness of Houdini to place those feathers, hopefully. So let's go ahead and. Uh, I'm thinking like stylized, but with like realistic hints. And that's, that's, I think that's another thing that I, I think people get caught up on. They're like, oh, I'm going to do stylized, I'm going to do stylized work because I, so I don't have to look up real world, like real world reference. And it's like, no, no, no. To do style, to go do really st good stylized work, that's what stylization means. It means you're stylizing the real world, right? You're taking, so for example, um, if I look at my reference for like this foot. So this this foot I'm super excited about because I want to do this on her hands and her feet. And I love, this looks so cool. This looks so cool. Like this doesn't even look like, a, you wouldn't even think this is, this is like a dinosaur or something, but it's a raven's foot. So I, so if I wanted to stylize this, I'm looking at the large features. Like, so this is how we stylize, right? There's all this like little dirt and discoloration and stuff. I'm looking at these large features. What I'm looking at when I'm going to stylize, I'm looking at these big plates here. Right, that's the first thing that jumps out at me. How there's these big plates on the top of the foot. That's the first thing that I'm looking at. So I definitely want to get those large forms. So basically what I'm doing as I'm looking at this, I'm filtering out all that superfluous detail. Right? So if I was trying to do this as a, as, a, as a realistic thing, I would be looking at these cracks and I would be looking at this little discoloration thing and I would be looking at all that really for stylization I re I'm looking at the big 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 forms okay second forms are these kind of like nodules here like these guys so I want to make sure I get those in and then another thing that I've, I noticed and I looked at a lot of these lately is the frequency of these guys is much lower than on the pads like there's less little nodules here they're like bigger than the one on the pad which makes sense right if you need like on the pad of your foot, you need more grip, which means you need more, you know, surface area. The more surface area you have, the more grip you have. So then these things automatically become smaller. So that's how you start to stylize stuff, right? It's not just throwing away reality. It's taking reality and then taking the big stuff and then exaggerating that big stuff, right? I see so many students are like, well, I don't need to look at, look at reference because it's gonna be stylized. If you're gonna stylize something, you actually have to look at more reference because you need to find the commonality across nature and say, okay, what is the symbol of this thing, right? What can I take from the real world and kind of wash away all the extra detail and just and exaggerate what's really there, okay? So this is gonna be really fun. So I'm gonna do this, hopefully, I'm gonna do this on, uh, on like her hands here and her feet here. And then on the underside, I'll have like all those little nodules and stuff. And then maybe for here, I might do some, uh, some like, something like that, like feathers, and then it'll, it'll have like the little plating. Oh yeah, that's gonna look really cool. Just drawing that out with the pen already feels right. All right, and then in between you'll have like those little Those little guys like that. Uh, we're gonna get into that right now. It's a good question. The production of the feathers. Uh, so I have never done full feathers before. I've never built a wing uh, from scratch before. So yeah, like you, you get to see, you get to see, see, see the thought process. Okay. So I'm gonna take. I'm gonna export this little wing as an FBX file. Export selection. Where is it? Well, Rusty and Maya. Let's see. It's gonna be an FBX. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. I need to set my project. That's the first thing I need to do. Set project. Documents. It's my Dropbox. You guys get to see my file organization here. So projects, 3D, uh, Maya projects, down here it should be somewhere it should be the only one that's there uh, not atlas beetle all yes it does yes it does you're very right christopher uh where is 
Oh, there it is. It's at that project. Bam. Okay. So along with that, um, since this is mostly a Maya project. Oh, and these were some really, really, really early renders that I did. Like just like super flat colors. Not really much. I just wanted to get a feel of what it looked like. Um, this is like super quick. Um, just a just a randomized bump map just thrown on her some little bit. Um, but I mean, this is very promising to me. Like her eyes look really good to me. Um, I really like the way they're catching the light. It means that my my angle between my the top of my forehead and my my chin is good. Um, around the eyes are a little wet, so that's working. Uh, this is a little wet, so that's working. So yeah. So these are really really old renders. This was like with like I, these were rendered with like Arnold one or two or something or whatever was out at that time so nothing super powerful um so what i want to do is i am going to make a houdini folder in this project Oh, there's already a Houdini folder in here. Is there? Oh, look at that. Okay, cool. Uh, looks like I already had a Houdini project in there, or a Houdini folder in there, so that's good. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, let's send out to that. L wing. I'm gonna rename this as well. That is why I set my projects. I can just go to root, workspace root and bam, it's gonna send me right there. So I'm gonna say, new geom. And this is gonna be an FBX. I'll call this L. Four feathers. Feathers. Maya. Steve X. Okay, so I should now have in that folder Geom and a wing feathers from FBX. Cool. So there's that. Uh, so let's uh, let's fire up Houdini and we'll get at it. Oh man, I've already been talking for 50 minutes. Yak yak yak. Uh, oh, one other thing while I'm doing this, let's look at my UV layout while Houdini is loading. Uh, so let's go to UV editing. So if we look at everything, so this is my UV layout, not the best, <laughs> not gonna lie, not the best. So these are my teeth, those are the UV layout that they had come in, so I was like, I'm not touching that, I'll just put it there. Um, I think this is my eyes. So I want a lot of detail in my iris. So that's my iris, and then this is the rest of the eye. Um, uh, I believe, yeah, that's my neck and my ears. And then these are my eyebrows and my eyelids. And then I have my head is on its all on its own UV tile. Now this is a very um, visual effects centric workflow because what this allows me to do is it allows me, I can have a bonkers high resolution for my face and then the rest of my head I can actually have a lower resolution because we're really never going to see this like especially if he's got that big long curly hair that I'm thinking about there's going to be hair coming out here there's going to be hair coming out here this doesn't need a huge um 
a huge amount of poly, or a, a huge amount of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, pixels uh, to to describe what's going on at the back of her head, and also you're rarely ever going to see the back of her head. So there's that. These are all my clothing, which could also use uh, a tune-up. And then these are, I believe, this is my arms. Yeah, these are my arms, which could also be packed way better. Like I feel like these. This should be straight up and down. I could probably get away with just straightening out these edges. So I might come back in here and do a little bit of UV work. These are my wings um, and that's the mouth. And I think these are the legs. Once again, don't need a lot of, of information here. So I could actually technically probably put all this stuff on the same, on the same patch if I wanted to save on memory. But that, that is, that's for later. That's for later. Uh, okay, let's fire up Houdini. I think it should be done. Yeah, it's open. So the first thing we have to think about is Maya is in centimeters and Houdini is in meters. So if things come in uh, into Houdini from Maya, they're going to be 100 times too big. So you have to always know what your internal working units are for your software. So Maya centimeters... Houdini's meters. So if I bring in this that wing, it's going to be a hundred times too big. Um, there are ways to bring it in through the, the through the importer that it says, "Hey, you know this was in uh, centimeters. I'm bringing in meters. Do that calculation myself." So we'll we'll get into that in a minute. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a project. So a new project. And I'm going to put that same spot. So let's see. Brian, Dropbox. Projects. 3D. I should probably make a shortcut for this for next week. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, my projects. And they modified. It should be both Valkyrie and Houdini. Accept. And I'll call this Valkyrie. Okay, so now I should have a nice little Valkyrie project. Yeah, there it is. So let's just take, um, let's take this stuff. Just always organizing. So Houdini projects, Valkyrie. Let's put these out here, and then my Houdini Geom. Take that. And then I'm gonna put that in Geo. Cool. So this guy can go away. Cool. Right. So now I can do, I'm gonna do a geometry. Call this feathers. All right, good to see you, man. Um, check out the rest and see where so I got. I'm probably gonna be working on this for uh, a couple of weeks, uh, at least, at least, at least four weeks. Um, probably more than that. So, probably five or six. Okay, so I'm gonna do a file, and I'm gonna go get. So go to my hip, and I'm gonna go to. Oh, I need to save this first. So I'm gonna say file, save as. And I'll call this Valkyrie Valkyrie V01. So now when I go to my hip file, yeah, there we go. There's my geo. And say accept. Let's see what this is. It should be really, really big. Yeah, so it's huge, humongous. Right, so that's what I, I was saying before. Um, always be wary of your uh, your scale. So uh, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba. So that's one way to bring in an FBX. Uh, let's see. So it doesn't look like there is any. 
doesn't look like there's any scale conversion. So, another thing we can do, this is what I love about Houdini, you can just, I'm gonna do an FBX, uh, FBX, let's see, probably just do an FBX character import, even though it's not a character. So this guy has a lot more uh, yeah so there's this convert units here so let's see if that gives us anything different Except. yeah so this guy this FBX character import so this is part of the new Kinefx, uh system um, it's meant for for bringing in characters but it could bring in you know whatever you like um, yeah, so it's meant to bring in characters. So it's, it's looking at that. So if I look at my front view. So yeah, she's about. Uh, let's do. Let's put a. Let's do and create a box. So. Her max height was about here in Maya. Yeah, well about 1.7, about 1.7. That looks about right, that's about right. So if I really wanted to check this, I could bring in her whole body and make sure that everything lines up, but I'm pretty sure everything lines up. Okay. So there's my wing. And the, the character FBX, it's like it's bringing in uh, the rest geometry, the capture pose, and the animated pose. I really just need, I really don't have any of that, so I'm just going to drop down no. And I'm just plug into there. And I want to see my geometry spreadsheet. Okay, so it looks like this is bringing this in as packed to geometry so i only have and you know you only have you have packed geometry when you have like this you only have one point this should be a lot more points and i can't see my my wireframes yes so i'm, I'm sending it i'm I, i'm not really sure I'm, I'm creating them in houdini because i can and i want to um i might bring the character into houdini um, and do the rest. I might send it back to Houdini. So it's a very fluid process. Um, I kind of have an idea where I, want, where I wanted to go, but I really don't know how all this stuff is going to fit together. And a lot of times, you have to do that. Like you're just like, all right, I have to do this. I'm just going to start, and I'll figure it out as I go along. And you'll learn a bunch doing that. Uh, so yeah. All right. So uh, so I need to convert this. So I'm going to leave. I actually I like that it's that it's that it's that it's a uh, that is bring that down to a correct size. Uh, so I'm going to convert this to geometry. So you should see. Yeah, so there are my polygons again. Now, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do this, I really want to make sure uh, it's way easier. Like this thing is what we call in pose. Um, and it's way, way easier to, um, to, uh, to build stuff straight or like orthographic, like flat, and then move it back into place. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use, I abuse this node so much. It's called a match axis, I believe. No, it's match size. Sorry. And what this thing does is it just pulls everything down to the origin. Um, and I can have like these these little offsets here. Too much. So I can have these offsets that go back and forward. Um, but the other thing that I wanna do is uh, I want to rotate this thing so it is, so it's flat like that. Uh, so I think I can just, I'll just eyeball it for now.
No, there's probably a more procedural way to do this, and I might actually look up how to do it in a more procedural way. But for now, because this thing isn't changing, I can just, you know, eyeball it. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Uh, Houdini is a great software to learn. It's a really, really good software to learn. Now, uh, now that I put it back, I put it down here. Um, but I want to be able to. Oops, a little bit off there. Yeah. So I want to be able to get it back, right? So I want to do all this work down here, and then I want to put it back. So the cool thing about this node and this guy here um, is I can turn on this restore transform. Or sorry, I can turn on stash transform. And here, right, down here, there's this invert transformation. So basically I said, pull it down with this guy and then align it with this guy. So what I can do is I can say unalign it and then put it back. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say actions and I'm gonna say, oh no, wait, where is it? Mm -mm -mm. Ah, here we go, create reference copy, boom. So we can see that this, these are all green because these are all referenced back to this guy, right? As you can see that they're exactly the same and we can see that they're all these channel references. But if I do this, I'm getting a double transformation. Now, what I can do is I can turn off this invert transform. I can say uh, delete channels. And if I turn that on, it's gonna put it back to what it was here. So these two things look exactly the same. So I've basically undone this, this transformation. The other thing that I can do is I can use another one of these to put it back where it was before. So I'm going to do a match size. So here now, instead of saying pull it down, I'm going to say restore transform. Bam. So now I basically undid what I just did. So basically what I have is this sandwich. Whatever I do down here right will get propagated back up into here and that's super 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 powerful right if i go back to here right no change between those they're mathematically in exactly the same spot that blew my mind right like i can i can move stuff down and make it all orthogonal after the fact and not have to like save like a like a transform or whatever uh uh, may I ask why you are doing that instead of just animating it? Ooh. Oh, that's because, so let's say, okay, so that's a good question. So if I have this guy, so this guy stores this thing called an X form. And that is this, right? It's like, a, it's a, it's a three dimensional, it's a, it's a four dimensional matrix, right? So this is, this thing's translation, rotation, and scale. What it's doing to pull this down here. So I'm going to build a bunch of other stuff right that goes on to this so let's say just for the sake of this so let's say that uh we'll do this i'm just going to scatter points on this this is kind of going to be the basis of our feathers eventually so let's say i scatter my points on this and then i'm going to copy let's see do i have normals i do not so I'm gonna give this guy some normals, the facet. Pre-compute normals. So this will give me, should give me some point normals. Yeah, so there are my point normals. And then if I scatter points on those, those points will also get normals. And so let's say uh, I want a feather Actually, I just, let's just say I want to copy planes onto these. So I'm going to make a grid. And this is going to be like, this is like the very, very basis, like the core of uh, of how the feathers are going to work. There's going to be some mathy stuff in there to get them to lay down right and like lift up at the end and all that stuff. But in general, this is what's going to happen. Uh, so I have this plane. So I'm going to do, and my plane should face along my 
Z axis because that's where okay so let's say this is my very 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 super 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 basic testing quote unquote feather okay so I'm gonna take my feather and I'm gonna copy it to the scatter point uh, let's copy the points I'm like already that kind of looks already that kind of looks like feathers um, so let's make this a little bit smaller again a little bit shorter maybe less points just so we can see what's going on All right, so those are those are feathers, quote unquote feathers scattered. And this, let's see, the should be facing down the z-axis. Okay, cool. So these are my feathers, right? So now what I want to do is I want to get these back up to where my original, uh, uh, my original wing was going to be, or what more my original wing was sitting. I could even like uh, let's, let's uh, rotate these. So I don't really have an up vector, so they're kind of going all over the place. Let's put a transform on these. Right, cool. So let's say these are very, very scraggly, scraggly feathers. But well, I mean, we'll we'll get to how to control this more later. But uh, let's see, these are scraggly feathers. Now, if I look here, let's see if I don't have that detail attribute um, because that is living over here. So what I can do, and I can sneakily take. And it might be crushed. Oh nope. I can sneakily use the detail attribute from this guy so I'm basically gonna take and I'm gonna blow away all the geometry in this stream and it's just gonna leave that detail behind so I'm gonna say uh, delete or I'm um, sorry blast keep this nice and tidy all right so this is gonna be a blast so it's gonna blow away everything so there's no so I'm just gonna say blast delete non-selected So there's no geometry, right? I now have no points, no vertices, no faces, but that detail attribute remains. So now I can take and I can merge this together. So now my quote unquote feathers have this detail attribute. I can now feed that data, put it back there, put it back there. All right, so now I can take and I can remerge these guys together. So I can say, uh, let's do this. Alt and click. So now I can put those feathers, feathers back to where they were. And then I would export this and then bring it back into Maya. Or if I, if I brought my character, if I brought my whole character into here, everything would still line up. So that's why like animating is just like, it's very volatile. Right, like if I if I bump something, if I move something, if I if I have auto key turned on and I and I rotate something, I'll never be able to get back to that without like going back to, um, back to the original, um, the original source file. So um, so this is our very very rough, <laughs> like she's got like she's like a rabies or something. But this is our very rough feather setup. So what the next thing we want to do is, is set up the different type of type of feathers and like building more like basically controlling how this how these how these uh how these feathers lay on the surface because right now they're just kind of like scattered everywhere okay 
But this is the, the basic mechanism, which I like once again, like in Houdini, like with this with, with this type of node system, you can make like this very simple kind of skeleton structure and then add complexity to it later. You don't have to keep, um, you don't have to make it work. You don't have to make it work and make it beautiful at the same time. You can get the like the mechanism worked out, and then you be like, okay, what do I need to do to make this look better? So this is like first pass, super crappy feathers, just to make sure I can pull the wing down to the origin and then put it back up into uh, in back back into its its rest state, I guess you could call it. Um, yeah. So, so how would we go about doing that, right? So I have. Uh, let me save this. Um, okay, so let's go back to just our base. And so the first thing I want to do is I want uh, I want my feathers, obviously... So the, the challenge to feathers is their orientation. That's the biggest thing because hairs are a single strand. You don't really have to care about how they're spun on the surface. Um, you also have, like, the, well, if you're doing, like, cinema, like, like, uh, like visual effects hair or... Uh, 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 feature animation here. It's just a single line. Like you don't care about how it's rotating on the surface. But with game hair and with feathers and uh, with scales, for that matter, you have to know how it's rotated on the surface. So you kind of have to know how rotation works in, uh, in CG if you're going to do a model, if you're doing models. Right. So first thing I need is I need some vector. So I already have, I already have the, I already have normals. So I already have these normals facing that way. So that gives me one, you know, way to control where where my object is, right? So if I have if I have if I have this vector, right, I can I know something can be pointed along that. But as you saw before, I can spin around that vector. So I can have a plane that sits like this, that goes up like that. Or I can have a plane that goes this I could even have a plane that goes like that like along the surface and that's what I want to, to start out with so I want to I want to start out with everything moving along along the surface so what I need is I need a second vector because if you watch any of my my streams before I really harp on this building transformation matrices it's it sounds really scary but it's really really simple all you need is two vectors. That's it, just two vectors. You need one going like this and one going like that. And it doesn't matter how long they are, doesn't matter how they're oriented, that's all you need. Because if you have those, you can build a third one and then you can build a fourth one that you're actually going to use. And that'll give you a transformation matrix. So I can align, uh, I can align my, my feathers like this. I can align my feathers like that. Or I can align my feathers like that. Okay, and I can even spin them along along in any one of those axes. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks, Ender. Uh, hopefully, you uh, got something out of it. Uh, so basically, what I can do is there. Yeah, and this is generally where I lose people. Like, oh God, he said the V word. I'm running. Just stick with me. It'll be awesome. Uh, okay. So, how would I go about doing this? So there's a nifty because, and this is the other reason why I align this to the world axis. There's a nifty little trick. In, uh, in Houdini, I can do a measure node. Let's see, measure. Plug this in here. And so this, by default, it's gonna measure area. So we can see big faces are, uh, big faces are red, small faces are blue, medium faces are white. What I can do, instead of fitting area, I can measure my gradient. So I can measure my gradient. Uh, let's see. Element for piece. Right now it's on the X component. I want it on the Z component. 
Yeah, so I'm getting a gradient that is moving from positive Z to negative Z. And let's see, what do I want with that? Source attribute. And I have an attribute called gradient, which should be, it's on per, looks like it's per primitive. I'm gonna do that per point. Yeah. Cool. So now, so there's my two vectors. Like I have this guy and I have this guy. So um, let's see. So if I take, if I were to take the, let's draw this. So this guy and this guy. If I were to take the dot product of those, I would get something like this. So that's not quite what I want. These are pointing in exactly the, uh, they're pointing exactly in the Z direction, which is close, but it's not exactly what I want. Now, there's a way I can do this. I can do this by hand. I think I'm just gonna do it by hand because this is gonna be very art directed anyway. So I don't have to do it everything 100% procedural. Uh, I, I fall into that trap when I'm working in Houdini. I'm like, oh, everything has to be procedural. It doesn't. So instead of this measure node, and like I said, this is the exploratory part. You're like, okay, maybe I can use this. Maybe I can use that. Like these parts look pretty good, but uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Let's just see. Let's see what happens. Let's do, let's call this up. So, uh, so I have an in and an up. So I'm gonna plug that into my scatter. It's not too bad. I mean, that's not bad at all. <laughs> now looking at that, like seeing it, seeing it visual, visualized, that's not awful. I've seen, I've seen much, much worse. Okay, 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 I like that, I like that. So let's see if maybe if I want a little bit more control over this, um, we can start to play with this. So I'm gonna use an actual, like we'll keep, we'll keep that, we'll keep that around, we'll keep that around. So we might be able to modify this with, um, first of all, I think I need more data. I think I need more data. So I'm gonna remesh this thing. So this should just give me a bit more data to work with. Let's say 0 0.02. Yeah, that feels good. That feels good. So it's gonna give me pretty much the same look. I'm just gonna have more information to work with. And then let's see what this guy looks like. So let's just point him straight down. General. right at the origin. So let's see, my size is gonna be, let's say 0 0.04, 0 0.08, and my center should be 0.04. So I'm just gonna say copy and paste relative reference. And then I'm going to say multiply by 0.5. So I should make sure no matter what I do to this, it always sit on the, on the origin. Okay, so that's I did that so I knew that the thing was pointing straight, straight down. So I'm not getting any false positives about uh, what, my, uh, what my direction is doing. Iteration, so these guys pull away from each other a little bit. 
And this is this is how we go about like building systems, right? You you build it up bit by bit by bit by bit. One of the one of the scary things that I find people people find uh, scary about uh, about Houdini and like things like like um, like node based systems like Nuke or uh, Substance Designer is you see these gigantic like super complicated or at least super complicated appearing. Um, uh, appearing graphs, right? I don't know why I'm, I'm freezing a lot today. <laughs> super complicated appearing graphs, and you're like, oh my god, I can never do anything like that. But that person didn't just go, blah, there's the graph, right? They were like piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. So, um, so let's go in, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something from one of the hair tools. I think it's called the comb. So what the comb allows me to do is it allows me to like procedurally comb out parts. Um, so let's see, I should be able to, override normal. So I don't wanna override my normal, I wanna override my up. Cause that's what I called this guy here. So here, I want to visualize that up. So I have this up here. Right now it's visualizing it as color, it looks like. Let's edit that. Uh, I want it to be a marker and I want it to be a vector. Cool. And right now I feel like it's going the wrong direction so let's just take before I do anything I'm gonna reverse that I'm gonna reverse that direction so I'm gonna say attribute expression and I'm gonna say uh, custom up and I'm gonna say negative self so that should just flip it over great awesome cool so let's check and see what that does to these guys so now they're facing the opposite direction, so I just need to flip this guy around. And this will also tell me the orientation of my, my overall feather when I actually put the real one in there. Yeah, so let's do 180 and negative 90. Okay, cool. So now, and with my comb, what I can do is I can start to push these guys around. Make them go in exactly the direction I want them to go in. Now these ones on the tip will be kind of difficult interesting to work with but okay so I want to move these so I believe these top ones should go like this should go along These guys should almost face straight down. And it is a natural phenomenon, so you don't have to be super, super strict about it. Now, right now I'm using this scatter. I think I might be able to just get away with doing this straight. Oh, yeah, there we go. That gives me a little bit better idea of what things are doing. Oh, yeah, that's much better.
So there might be a better way to do this, but uh, this is what I'm coming up with so far. And I think it's working not, I mean, it's, it could be better, but uh, it's working. It's getting the, getting the job done. And the great thing about this, this method is, is it's still pseudo procedural. It's still pretty pseudo procedural. So what I can do is if I'm, if I feel like I have too many feathers overall, like I feel, if I feel like it's getting, uh, getting too clumpy, I can come all the way back up to my remesh and I can come back and start to do this. And the comb is smart enough where it'll, it'll keep, it'll, uh, it's gonna recalculate those brush strokes. Okay, so this is kind of like, I'm blocking. Like if you're, if you're drawing, if you're animating, if you're modeling, this is my, my blocking stage. I'm not worried about like all the little fine details and such. I really just wanna get like the overall flow of everything. If it's a little ugly right now, I'm okay. I have to be okay with that. Uh, if any of you have ever taken my classes or ever seen any of my other streams, this is what we call uh, the Valley of the Suck, right? Things are going to look really bad for a while before things start to look good. Especially when you're experimenting. Okay. So, not bad. Looks kind of like a, like a ticker tape parade, but... Uh, we're getting there. We're getting some directionality into this. So I want to line these top ones for sure. Okay, so the next thing is uh, I kind of want to um, kind of smooth out some of this, some of these directions. Okay, so uh, I can use probably just an attribute blur. And so I was working on, I was working on that up vector, so it's not gonna be P, it's gonna be up. And so yeah, oh yeah, that's that's already feeling a lot better. Just kind of smoothing out. So that's with no smoothing. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like smoothing out those vectors so that they feel a little bit more uniform. And so if I want to see uh, see what these look like when they're longer, I'll just take this guy. And so it's rough, it's very, very rough, but it's giving me, like if I squint, let's do background, dark. If we look, if we get really far away, we start to do this. Now they're all the same size, but that's starting to give us a very, very rough shape of, of that wing that we want so these would be like something this long would be be those under under parts and we have like this kind of like top ridge that we would that I probably need to probably need to deal with a little bit And that's probably coming from uh, from my from my from my remesh. So let's go back and let's grab, let's plug this into my scatter and plug that into there, so I get a little bit more uh, randomized. Turn these up. So I have these guys that are crossing uh, underneath. So those are gonna have to be um, those are gonna have to be handled a little bit different, differently because they're facing the wrong they're uh, the facing the a different direction. But I think I'm liking this. I'm liking I'm liking where this is going. Okay. Uh, all right. What's next? How do we how do we move forward from here? Got about a half an hour left. Okay. 
so let's pull this down. Don't need that many. All right, so hmm, what what should I do next? Let's go. So whenever I get to a, to a point like this, I kind of take stock and reevaluate. It's like, all right, what do I have here? So I have, um, let's bring this. Okay, so I have these vectors that are facing in proper directions, ish. Yeah, even these, I, I like how these are kind of coming out like this. Um, so I think, so I'm gonna have to break this up into, let's see what these guys are doing. And I have my normal normal data yeah so I'm gonna have to treat the the feathers that are on the sides a bit different from the ones that are that are coming off the bottom I actually might just make I might just draw a curve and uh, and uh, and have those feathers come off there. So let's go back. Let's go, let's go back to our source material and see what we get. Let's see what we look at. Okay. So these would be pretty small feathers on top, and then they'll get bigger and bigger and bigger as as they uh, as they reach the top. As they actually as they reach the bottom. So in my case here, looking at this little guy. I think next week I'll fire up Pure Ref just so I don't have to keep doing this over and over again. So the there we go. Where's my big pen? So I'm thinking the inside of this guy, like my geometry is like gonna go like this. that's going to be the geometry. Now these guys need to lay down like that. So that's basically what my normal is doing. My normals are doing this. Now my, or no, my, my L vector is doing that. Now my normal is sticking out of these. That was kind of coming straight toward you. That was coming straight toward you. Like that. So, I need a third vector that's going to do this. So to do that, mm -mm, let's see where am I at? Feathers here. Uh, so I don't want ah, that's what that's what I'll do. That's what I'm gonna do. So I for these feathers, so these are gonna be like my generalized feathers, those top feathers. Uh, so what I want to do is I only want so I'm gonna go back to that scatter. I only want to scatter feather points on these kind of top surfaces. I want this underside to be naked more or less and um, and so I'll, I'll treat that a little bit differently so I'll probably put a curve underneath there so that'll have like that nice controlled wing that that I, that I can control very very uh, uh, procedurally so for that I'm going to paint some density um, yeah so let's do an a attribute actually I might be able to kill two birds with one stone with this. Yes, I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone with this. So for this, I am going to take and I'm gonna make a curve. I'm gonna draw a curve along the bottom here. What I could do. I wonder if I can turn this curve, this this polyline into a curve. Let's see. 
edge. I know in Maya there's a way to do it. Like you can say, just say, convert. Oh man, my brain went back into Maya mode just now when I started polymodeling. It's weird. I definitely want these two bits. So I think if I blast. to dissolve delete non-selected That didn't do what I wanted. Um, let's see. How would I do this? Eh, like this is this shape is gonna change, so I'll just draw it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a curve. And I'm gonna turn on point snapping. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw this curve down the bottom of this. So there's my curve along the bottom. So this will be uh, this will be my kind of like curve that I can do uh, that I can build off of. So, so that's my curve. I can uh, I'm gonna resample this to make it smooth. So resample. So this, uh, I can control how many feathers I have based on on this guy, on these points. So that's that's another set of feathers that I'm going to be able to make. So uh, I need normals for this because this doesn't have any normals, right? So I'm going to grab those normals from, uh, let's say, from this facet here. So I can transfer my normals from that facet over to, to this curve. Transfer attributes. Probably should have done this part first. It's a little way easier. Attribute transfer. Uh, transfer from or to and from. And there are my normals. So they're a little wonky. So maybe. Maybe I want to give, actually, what I can do is I can do another attribute blur, and that'll kind of bring them into alignment. But the other thing I can do is since I flatten this out, I can take the normal and I can kill the, the, the Z direction. Actually, that's probably better. So, so that's attribute expression. I'm going to say normal. say set and I'm going to say self dot oh actually it's zero and self dot y and self dot z oh help if I spell self right so that just flattened all that stuff out. And I'm gonna go ahead and renormalize that as well. So now 
now they're all straight. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll just do an attribute blur because I'm getting some of these little kinks in here. That's feeling good. I actually want that one going straight off the edge. It's all good. Two. Feels pretty good. I wonder why these aren't blurring down here, though. That's fine. Uh, I can deal with that. And then same thing as over here, I need an up vector. So my up vector for these guys is pretty straightforward. It's just X. So I can just say attribute create. Create. And we'll call this. Uh, it's going to be up. Size is going to be three, so I need a vector, and I need it to be in the x direction. So one and one. So that's my transformation for that. And so if I take now, I'm just going to copy. I'm going to copy this. So I should get something like that. So that's working pretty well. It's just my Z is in the wrong direction. So let's look at what we can do for that. Let's find that. Yeah, there we go. So if I take just that guy straight into there, should get that. So not super beautiful just yet, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Okay, it's getting there. So, uh, so now I have, I have, and so maybe that's that's too many feathers, and those are probably gonna have to be a little bigger. So I'm gonna copy this guy, and I'll use this. This will be a separate feather. So I'm just setting up frameworks for everything, right now. And these will be, I think these will be a little bit wider. Right, cool. So now I have those in place. I can start to I can start to play around with uh, how I control. Just one in. Let's play with this blend width, maybe. Bring up my sample count. Ah, that starts to, to even things out. Perfect. Perfect. Still getting that last little bit on the edge there. So that's probably up in my resample. Might actually just have to move these around by hand. Or one thing I could do is instead of resample, there's a trick you can do. Is I can convert this to a NURBS curve and then convert it back to a 
uh, convert it back to a geometry curve or a uh, polygon curve and that'll kind of smooth everything out. So I'm going to do a convert. So polygon to, uh, let's see. I want to convert from a polygon to a NURBS curve. So that should smooth that out. And then if I throw that into a resample, get something like that. Level one. Alright, cool. I'll take that. I'll take that for now. I will definitely take that for now. Okay, uh, so if I don't want as many of those, I can just resample this again right before it goes in. So, resample. Maybe we'll scoot this back over. said always we're always just playing with uh um with systems now i may actually i may actually end up just abandoning this and going for um for like a like an actual hair system uh, which could be interesting but we'll see we'll see if that works uh like i said this is very experimental it's I've never done this before so i'm just going off of what i know and seeing what i seeing what i can come up with okay uh, let's see. Do, do, do. So there's my wing, and there's my. I really don't like this part here, but that's that's getting into nitty gritty. But I've got the two. I've kind of got the two pieces. So I have my kind of like my crazy feathers, and actually those can probably get a little bit smaller now. A bit thinner, and I have my my big controlled feathers. Now, for my big controlled feathers, uh, if I go back once again, go back to my source material, it looks like they start small-ish, and then they get wider, and then they get smaller. So I can go ahead and start to control that right now with uh, with a uh, resample. So with my resample, I'm going to say uh, curve U. And then for my curve U, so that'll give me a zero at the start and a one at the end. And I can do a remap value. That should be remap. And so that I can say my original is going to be curve U. My new one is going to be P scale. So that will control the scale of my feathers. So that's already good. So I can just reverse this. Actually, no, I did want to start small and then get bigger. So it gets really big and then it gets quite small. So obviously I'm going to have to find a better way to control the, the orientation of these guys overall. Um, which I could do. I'll do some experimenting offline. But I think maybe, just maybe, let's do a little test. I'm just going to draw a line down the center of these guys and see if they converge anywhere. No, it doesn't look like I was hoping that they would kind of hit all one point because then I could uh, I could do that. I could do like a, a fanning effect like that, but that's not going to work. Okay, figure something out. There's always a way. 
There's always a way. Even if it's if, if I have to go in and just plant these individually, because there's really only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. There's only eighteen of these really, really large feathers. So I might be able to go in and hand plant those with a uh, with a with a hair system. So I ended up doing that. But this is a good start. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to keep these little feathers here from being grown on the underside of, of this guy here. So let's turn that off. Let's turn this off. And what I'm going to do is here... Ah, and I'm still getting this harsh edge here. So I think what I'm going to do before I resample this is subdivide. I'm going to subdivide that twice to smooth it out. Maybe. That'll help with some of my normal issues. Yeah, it did a little bit. So I'm not getting that hard kink anymore right here. That's a little bit better. That's actually a little bit better. And actually, I might. Uh, let's. That's right there. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. So I'm blurring my at my blurring my my normal before I put it on the uh, on the curve. There we go. That's feeling a lot better. That's feeling way more controlled. And this is this is what I love about this stuff. Like you can just move you can move bits around. So I might uh, so what did I say? I said 18 uh, so I'm right now I have 28 so I have twice as many. So let's, let's just do 20. A nice round number. And so the problem with that p scale is is that um, the problem with the p scale is is that it's it's scaling everything. I just want them to scale like this way. I don't want them to scale that way. Yeah. So um, there are other attributes I can use to to deal with that. But overall, I'm getting way more control out of. Uh, I just want to scale the length. I don't want to scale the entire object. So there are other ways that I can deal with that. But this is this is looking way better. Way, 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 way better. Um, but I mean, there I could also like I'm, I'll probably end up just hand placing those because this this end tip is going to be very, very, uh, very. Uh, there's a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Specific, right? It's got to look very. I want it to have, and it's already got like kind of like the overall shape, but I need like one like right here. Uh, so I may have to hand place those. But anyway, all right. So last thing we're gonna do, going back, let's organize this up a little bit. Shift L. So that's one set of feathers, and this is another set of feathers. So we're probably gonna end up with like five or six sections of these, and then we'll we'll merge them merge them all together. Okay. So uh, let's see where are we at here. Right. So I want to paint. Um, density, yes. So this is blur up. Okay, so what I said is I want, I don't want any, I don't want any uh, feathers to grow on the underside here. So I'm going to do an attribute paint. Actually, no. That's why I made the line in the first place. So I'm going to steal, take this line here. 
and I'm gonna put a color on it. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put black on it, color. Make sure that's point color. And this one, I'm also gonna point it, put a color on. And this will be white. All right, so I'm gonna use that white for density. <clears throat> so I'm going to transfer, this is going to come all the way over here, which is a little sloppy. I don't really, generally don't like to cross my streams this way, but it's okay. We'll work it out later. So I'm going to do another attribute transfer. And I'm going to transfer color onto this guy. Start to take my thread distance threshold down. Should see. So now I'm basically saying, all right, nothing should grow underneath underneath here. It's a really nifty way to control where stuff's gonna grow and stuff isn't. And so I can do a blend with, I can blend that out as well. That blend with should be pretty small. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, cool. So now I can uh, I can say uh, so my scatter here. I can say density attribute, and I can say CD. So I shouldn't be getting any. Yeah, there we go. So as I if I were to take this distance threshold, if I were to take that up like that, you can see that only these guys are growing. Yeah, so there we go. So now only they're not they're not growing on the bottom on the bottom there. So there we go. So there's those feathers and that would be these feathers. So I'm gonna just merge these together real quick. So not amazing, but this we have we have a system, we have a system now. So um, a little bit of more, a little bit more finesse. We got to deal with. Uh, so next week we're gonna deal with uh, with basically these top parts, like these top little ones. They're probably gonna have to be a lot shorter to handle that curvature. Um, I might end up doing a ray and a lift, maybe like to just ray this stuff down to the surface so that it's not sticking off so far, and then maybe lift it back up. Uh, could do that as well. Um, might end up just, uh, we'll have to deal with um, this sizing. Like, so I only wanted to grow in one direction. 